thank you so much for coming. Welcome to Girl Boss Rally in LA. <laughs> My name is Athena Chen. I am the VP of Brand Strategy and Partnerships at Girl Boss, and we are so, so, so excited for our second startup studio ever. And we are doing this for the second time with our partners at Chromebook. And just to give you guys a little bit of a sense of why. So, you know, we are all about changing the way that we are living these days, and we do things differently. You all know that how you live, what success means to you is completely being redefined and we are so happy that we have partners like Chromebook who are who are building technology that is going to help facilitate how it is that you are going to become startup champions. And so this is Startup Studio brought to you by Chromebook. This first session obviously has become completely overpacked. We apologize for everyone who's standing. Um, you will be working alongside your Chromebook product and laptops throughout the session. And we have three amazing, amazing industry hero leaders, female, amazing rock stars, who are going to be talking to you guys about creative services and branding and all of the things that you need to know from varying different perspectives. Um, so get ready, this is about an hour and a half long, so get comfortable. Um, for those of you who are standing, that you guys wanna like move around and you wanna maybe come back, we are gonna do this all over again, same exact speakers, same exact presentation in about an hour. And so you, if you want to come back for that experience, by all means, feel free, all right? So without further ado, because we have, or we are running a little bit late, I wanted to first introduce you guys to Lisa Clooney, who is the co-founder and CEO of Joan, which is a creative agency. She is a personal hero of mine, <laughs> someone who I have worked with in the past, and you guys are in for an incredible, incredible treat. And she is going to be followed by two other incredible women who I will come back up and introduce once we get going, all right? Thank you, guys. And if you have any questions whatsoever, just raise your hand throughout the presentation because you're going to be working with the laptops. And we'll just come around. We'll have volunteers that come around and help you guys, all right? So the first thing is open up those laptops. If they're asleep, wake them up. And I'm going to let Lisa take it. Hey. Hi, everybody. My name's Lisa Clooney, and I am the founder, the co-founder of a company named Joan, which is named after our favorite Joan, Joan of Arc, um, and also all the other amazing Joans who've gone into fields that were primarily dominated by men, like Joan Jett, Joan Baez, you know, tons of them, Joan Armatrading, um, and who have um, brought their spirit of individuality and persistence to a, a field that women really weren't at the top of. Um, so we, we, our spirit of our company is really around joyful rebellion. We're a very happy group of people, but we are really fighting against, um, um, you know, sort of the status quo. So Joan is three companies. It is a creative agency, um, and we work on brands like uh, Netflix, Google, um, we work on Blue Nile, the diamond company, which is great. Um, we work with General Mills, we work with uh, Adidas, did I say that? Um, just lots of, lots of very interesting brands. Um, and we do that for men and for women, but we are primarily run by women. We also have a digital magazine called Damn Joan, which is... Um, super fun, and it's also culture mag for rebellious women. And then we have a foundation, a 501c3 foundation, which took us almost a year to form, that is um, a foundation that endeavors to bring more diverse talent into the creative fields. I mean, one of the big challenges is that if people don't see themselves represented, they can't possibly imagine that there's a job there for them. So we start in seventh grade, and we try to expose as many people as possible to the career opportunities of being a creative person, especially in the marketing side. Um, and we also talk to the parents, because many parents don't know that it's an OK job to encourage their children to do. So that is our three companies. Um, how many of you run your own brands? Yeah. And how many of you run other people's brands? Yeah. All right, cool. That's about 50-50, actually. It's interesting. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about creating for brands and then creating your own brand, whether it be your personal brand or a brand that you are the founder of and, and very intimately driving. 
Okay. So the past five years has been kind of bananas in terms of the way the world has changed in terms of forming brands. If anybody knows um, Parachute or Allbirds or you know any of those brands that have built so much through the content space, you're really seeing a new way of building a brand, which feels a little bit like overnight success. However, historically, it was never like that. You had to to you know um, build by you know finding your fans, but it was much harder. And then real brands sort of became mature when they were able to advertise like on television. But that is so expensive, and the access points now for so many people are are much easier to get. So um, the good news is, is that creating for brands now is, in some ways, more accessible than it ever has been. People are creators. Everybody's a creator in a way. You have the tools to do so. You have social media, which can build brands overnight. It's also the dark side of it, because if you're not distinctive, you can just be doing the same thing that everyone else is doing, and you can have a really hard time building your individual personality. Um, so when you're thinking about creating for brands, the first thing that we do as an advertising agency is try to figure out what the core DNA of that brand is um, and trying to find words that are not generic or jargon, which is really hard um, because a lot of, play, a lot of uh, categories use the same tools over and over and over again. It's interesting, if you ever read, um, there was a book that somebody interviewed Danny Meyer, the restaurateur, about his business, and he said, they, they asked him, how did you create such an interesting um, collection of, of restaurants? And he said, well, I don't, I don't believe I'm in the restaurant business. I'm in the hospitality business, which is an interesting way to de take, a, take something that everybody knows that you do and turn it on its head and try not to use the jargon or the industry lingo around, around your work. So figuring out what's true to the brand. And then what's true to the brand may not always be relevant. So then just pushing really hard to ensure that you're picking values and you're picking attributes of the brand to highlight that are incredibly resilient or salient and, and, um, and relevant. And then the third piece of that is this comes from comedy in a way where when you start a joke and you back off the joke, it's like not a funny joke. If you're going to play it, you got to play it to the hilt. You really have to go there. They call it commit to the bit. So if you are um, standing for something, you found something distinctive that's true about your brand, it really matters to people, do not take your foot off the gas. That is such a common issue. You have to push into the gas. Um, sometimes I feel like when people are trying to stand for something, they kind of get nervous. OK, there's going to be people who don't like this. Yes, that's when you know you did it right. There should be people who actually say, this is not for me. Because there will be a lot of other people who say, this is for me. So go there. That's almost the most important thing, going there. You know, you can, you can know what you are, but if you don't actually tell the world what you are, you know, it's like a fig tree falls in the, in the, in the woods. Um, the one last thing is that my dad used to say to me, chin up, buttercup. And uh, I think about that all the time, like how, how do you um, face the challenge of how hard this is every single day? And I think it's, it's, first of all, I think cut yourself some slack because it is really hard. It's hard for even the biggest pros in the industry. They're having the same kinds of conversations as the startups are. Um, like trying to be distinctive, trying to matter, trying to find their communities. Those are all the same things, whether you're you know, Amazon or your, you know, a candle maker who starts a little shop in the middle of Soho or something like that. Um, so it's really important to cut yourself some slack and just keep going and, um, and remember that sometimes endurance is actually the winning quality. <laughs> it's like, just keep at it. So keep your chin up. I think it's, I think it's really important to not feel like overwhelmed by, by um, all of it. So to that point, um, you probably have heard a lot about content. It feels like it's the biggest buzzword of marketing right now is, you know, oh, I make content, and we build our brand through content, um, TM, you know. I think it's, uh, it's very difficult to understand what the role of content is in building brands. I think that there are just as many people who believe that content has made their brand as there are people who believe that they have misspent their money by not attributing the content properly to their brand. 
So I, I want you to know that this is another place where um, if you feel confused by it, you're not alone at all. I think the most important thing about building content is that it comes from a truth of who you are and what you do and the value that you give to your audience. Um, because content for content's sake is disposable and unmemorable, even though that one piece could be really interesting, what does it mean as a knock-on effect for your audience? So thinking about your audience as people who come to you for a specific thing, offering more content in that vein is like an ad in a way. So just making sure that you're not offering content that's just entertaining but doesn't connect back to the truth of your brand or why you're there or why your audience loves you. Um, one of the questions that I was asked when I was putting this together is, how do you, in the sea of content and everything being, you know, everywhere, how do you stand out and how do you, how do you stand up? I think that more than ever, it is really important to stand up for things you absolutely believe in. Um, there is a really big financial company called BlackRock. It's run by a man named Larry Fink. He advises many, many Fortune 50 companies, very many global companies. And he expressed at Davos this year that when, um, when governments fail their people, which is happening not just, well, uh, not just in the United States, my, my point of view, I may not be everybody's point of view, but everywhere, but many places all over the world, that is incumbent upon marketers and brands to stand up for their audiences too and, um, and offer things that many governments are not giving to people. So that's at the macro level, thinking about how um, brands like, you know, Google brought Wi-Fi to Puerto Rico is a, is an, after, the, after the hurricanes. That's an amazing thing that Google was able to do. So just thinking about this, if that's a macro context and we're all running small or medium-sized brands or, or, or larger ones, how can we bring that sentiment? What do we stand for? What do we stand against? What are we here to do? That's the fastest way to get people to see you for your light to shine, and for that to be a lighthouse effect for all of the people who also believe that to come to you. And it's good for the world. Um, OK, this, this section here is about um, the fact that the playbook for building brands is, is in some ways tossed out. In the agency business, it was long uh, run by, by men, and primarily white men. And, um, and so many people in the world did not see themselves represented by the marketing and the advertising that was done on behalf of brands. And the wonderful news is, is that th that day is kind of over, and more and more women and people of color, people who haven't seen themselves represented, are now creating content and, and advertising on behalf of brands. So it is a really wonderful time to join the industry and to be an entrepreneur. And if you're looking for a company to partner with or to um, create your brand with, the things that are really super important is the empathy that they can find with your audience, um, which is another really terrific reason why we need more diversity in creative departments, because not everybody looks like in, typically the audience that they serve. So the first, first, first thing is to make sure that there's empathy from the brand to the audience. I love my audience. Here's why I love my audience. They're freaking cool. I'm doing this for them. There should be no condescension between the content that you make and the audience themselves. And really, really, really making sure to call that out. That's like really super important. And then the second thing is sparkly, dazzling, dynamic, creative ideas. Nothing replaces the most amazing creative ideas ever. And, and this is a place where I personally feel many people settle. Um, you know, if you, if you think about uh, how many times your, your, maybe on Instagram is a good example, you're following a company and you kind of don't know if it's from this company or their competitor because they all kind of do the same thing, you know. Um, really beautiful product shots shot the exact same way or really beautiful food shots all shot that same way. It could be beautiful, but it's it dazzling and sparkling and different. These are the places where it's really super important. Never, never, never settle on that. And then thinking about ideas that are bigger than the medium that they're in. So when you think about um, 
maybe Nike is a good example just because it's a good reference for everybody, but just do it being a, a line that summarizes personal achievement and the ability to, to achieve can now be manifest itself when it's expressed at that high level in an Instagram strategy, in a Facebook strategy, in a television campaign, in a product design and development uh, way. So making sure that the ideas are not tied too much to one particular medium, that they're bigger, and that they can travel through. And that will be the best way to build your brand using all of the tools that you have at your disposal. So if anybody knows this company, Free the Bid, this is a really good place to access female filmmakers. Um, it was started by an amazing filmmaker. Her name is Alma Harrell, and she... Um, she has done so many amazing music videos. She did a gorgeous one for Sigur Rose. She's an incredible, incredible filmmaker. She um, noticed that many production companies were not signing female filmmakers. And in many cases, the, um, the people who were hiring the filmmakers were hiring the, their buddies, the people that they knew. And that, was, that exclusionary bidding process was leaving behind women in that way. So she started this organization called Free the Bid. She's got brands and, um, and agencies and all these creators to sign a promise that they will uh, seek female filmmakers if they have to do a triple bid, that they will at least build bid one that will hear the voices of these women creators. So if you're looking for female filmmakers to partner with, I would highly recommend you start with Free the Bid. It is a wonderful, wonderful organization. And if you're a female creator who is kind of in a sea of other people who aren't women, a great place to connect to other women to further your own career and to meet um, fellow makers and have support is the 3% Conference, which was started by an amazing woman named Kat Gordon, um, who has brought an awareness to the fact that only 3% of all of the creative directors in the United States are women. Um, I think it's now 11% after she started this, so it's really good. Um, I talked a little bit about our foundation. This is a um, this is a thing that I really very much believe in. If you can't tell, <laughs> um, but it's it's it is I think incumbent upon all of us in positions of um, power and strength to invite and include other people wherever possible. So um, yeah, we need more irregular thinkers. If everybody thinks the same, boy, how boring will our world be? We need people who think dramatically different than we do to in, come into our brands, to help us connect to our audiences, and to teach us, and to bring us along too. So, OK, branding yourself. So this is, um, this is more maybe about branding your own company or branding yourself if you're trying to build your personal brand. But it's very similar to branding a company, you know, a, a third party company. Who are you? What are you? And what do you stand for? Deciding what you stand for is probably the most important thing that you can do. Um, and when you say what you stand for, you really need to acknowledge what you stand against. Because everything needs attention to be incredibly relevant. Um, so, you know, when I think about my personal brand, for example, I am known in the advertising industry as a huge champion of diversity and inclusion. Um, how, do I, how do I do that? I acknowledge it. I say it. I started a foundation. I every time I shoot a a film, a commercial, a, a photo shoot, I look for women, people of color, people who have not seen themselves represented in front of the camera, behind the camera, and to tell their stories in their own voices. Um, the other piece of that is trying to never be a tourist in someone else's culture, just inviting more people from that culture to participate in that idea. So that is an example of here's where who I am. Here's what I believe in. Here's what I stand for. And what I stand against. I stand against a lack of equality. I stand against injustice. I stand against um, leaving people out and behind exclu exclusionary tactics. Um, and I connect to my tribe by saying it, which means I'm very open about it. I talk about it all the time. People who believe in that stand with me. They look me up. They connect with me on Twitter. They connect with me at my companies. The brands that want to stand with that, come to Joan. 
Think about Joan as a partner. That's an example, I think, of being very clear about who you are, what you believe in, and what you do. And then getting off the sidelines. This is a big one, I think, for many people. Um, is how they move from being a person behind their computer screen who acknowledges to being a person who joins the conversation and participates in the conversation. So that is a really, really important uh, part of this. How do you get into it? Well, the first thing is connecting to your tribe. If you see me and you agree with me, connect to me, I connect to you back. You're in the tribe. That's the way it works in social and in connection. You know, so you can start very easily by tweeting at somebody that you believe in, by tracking them down, asking if you could maybe take them for a cup of coffee, um, uh, putting your own voice out there. You can stay on Twitter. You can even do retweeting for a while if that's really helpful for you. But just participating, even in the smallest possible way, in the dialogue that you believe in very passionately, people find each other. Um, and, you know, once you've done that and you've dipped your toe in the water, then it's time to really be brave. Um, here's an example. You know, you can, you can move from being behind the scenes, tweeting at people, finding your tribe, to saying, hey, let's have a meetup. You know, I'm inviting, I made a poster, I'm inviting all these people, come meet me at this bar on the corner, and we're going to have a, a conversation, a panel. I, I found two people to speak, I'm going to interview. And it goes very quickly like that, from, from, from just connecting with a few people to being like, hey, come, come to New York, come do this panel with me, whatever. It takes like not that much time to do it. And people are really eager to connect. So don't be afraid. That's the first step to being brave is to, is to try to do some organizing around that. And the next thing is somebody invited you to be on a panel. And then it kind of, it kind of snowballs. OK, yeah, yeah. I'm out of time, I'm out of time, wow. Okay, takeaways, key takeaways. <laughs> know your strengths, do not be modest. Modesty is not good. Know your strengths. Know your values, find your tribe, use your creativity, and build bottoms up, which is connecting one-to-one -one with people that believe what you believe, and helping, if you, if you work on a brand, helping that brand to do the same. And that is it.